So we have gone through, this is the sixth week of the series. We talked about uh, the fact that we're here because God decided to create. He decided to create the universe. He did it because he wanted to. Uh, despite all the things that we look at the world and we don't like about it, and we think we would have done a better job than God, the reality is he's God, we're not. He did it, and we could not. He created everything. And he created it perfect, knowing that it would become as messed up as it is today. But he did it because he is love. That is, God is love. Recognizing that God is love, what that means is, knowing that love is an action, God expresses his love. And so, to express his love, he needed folks like us who needed the expression of his love. Right. Because he knew how we would mess up, providing the perfect opportunity for love to be expressed through mercy and grace. Yes. Amen. Amen. Then that third week, we talked about the fact that God, when he made it, he, he not only wanted to express love, but he wanted to multiply love. That is that one, he expresses his love through mercy and grace to us, but then we express our love for one another by having mercy and grace upon each other. So that when I mess up, you show me mercy. And when I'm in need, you show me grace by providing my needs and vice versa. So that we're helping one another, so that the love of God that came to us is now multiplied through us and so that God's purposes are being fulfilled because he wants to love and he wants to multiply love as well. Amen. So then we talked about uh, the reality that God is God, but the enemy, Satan, has sought to rise and to be like God. There's only one that we need to bow down before. There's only one that we owe allegiance to, but Satan, before he was Satan, was Lucifer, and he has tried to exalt himself against the Lord. And so part of the creation, and part of why we're here, is to prove to Satan and to us that given the choice, free will that we have, we will choose to serve the Lord instead of serving ourselves, and instead of serving Satan. Right? So there, there is this constant question, you know, are the only ones that serve God those that have no choice, like part of the heavenly creatures? Or if you give free will that people can choose to serve, will anybody serve? Well, we are in this room who have received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have answered that question, but we have to remember that Satan is constantly trying to get us to change our mind. He wants to say that he failed because God gave him free will, so that, and the proof of it is our fault. But how many will stay with me and say, I'm not going anywhere? I mean, we all know there's nothing out there anyway. Right? There's, there's nothing out there of eternal consequence anyway. If, if you try everything that the world has to offer, the reality is you're going to live a very uh, uh, regretful life. A life full of pain and anger and full of regrets. Because all that's out there is death and destruction, betrayal, backstabbing, right? What they call love is not. Right? What they call good is not. Amen. And what they call evil is not. Right? The world is upside down. So if you if you are looking for your satisfaction to come from the, the world system, you're going to be very disappointed. Right. You're going to be very disappointed. Yeah. Right? Which is why I'm not going back. Right? I've been out there. You've been out there. And, and, and you know like I know there's nothing out there. Right? What we need is we find it in Christ. Amen? Amen. All right, so, so in Deuteronomy, well, let me pray first, uh, but we're going to look at verse 29 of Deuteronomy. What chapter? 29. Chapter 29, verse Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Deuteronomy 29, 29. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord that you will speak into our hearts, that you would help us, Lord, to know you, to see you, to hear you, to experience you. Help us, Lord God, to be convinced, fully persuaded, so as to never return to our old way, to our old paths, but instead, Lord, to keep our faith in you, our hand in your hand. Bless us, Lord God, to be your answer to this world's questions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so Deuteronomy 29, if someone would be so kind to read it for me, please. The secret things belong to Jehovah our God, and the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever, that we may do all the words of this law. All right, so what this is saying is that there are some things that are secret. Right? And we, we need to acknowledge the reality that we're not going to get everything. We're not going to understand everything. Amen. Amen. Right? That's important for us to know because if you feel like you've got to understand it for it to be true, then again, you're just going to be frustrated because there's way too much going on in the world for you to get it all. Or for me to get it all. Or even our smartest people on the planet to really understand everything that's going on. This is some complex stuff that God has created, the, the complexities of the universe, uh, the, the natural forces of things, way beyond our ability to comprehend, let alone the real underlying reason that God does what he does. The Bible says God moves in mysterious ways, and it says it for a reason, because we don't know. Right? Many times God is moving, and we think he's over there, and he's over there. Many times we can't see the Lord at all, and the reality is he's all around, and we have no idea. Right? But in our pride, we will act as if we have to understand in order for it to be real, in order for it to be true. And I'm going to tell you, that's just ridiculous. Everybody say ridiculous. That's ridiculous. To say you got to understand it. Right? It's better to say, I don't understand. Right? It's better to say, I don't understand, and really, I don't need to understand. I'm just going to trust the Lord. That's better than saying, I got to understand, otherwise it's not true. That's just ridiculous. You know, you go to a calculus class on the first day, you don't understand. Right? right? But if you stay in class and you study and all that kind of stuff prayerfully, you will understand some stuff. <laughs> you will understand some stuff after a while. Right? But, then, but you know, like in school, the way they do it is, uh, when the test time comes, they say, okay, what's going to be on the test? Right? And you're trying to figure it out. So you, 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 you know, okay, it's going to be chapters 4 through 6 and 7 through 8. But what about chapter number 5 or chapter 10? Oh, that won't be on the test. Right? So you don't have to know that. Right? But you understand while you're taking a test that there's more information. You just don't have to know it. Right? And so when it comes to our relationship with God, we recognize that there's a whole lot more information out there. We just don't have to know it. All we have to know is who God is, that he loves us, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, paid our penalty for our sins, and that if we believe on him, we too can be saved. Amen. Amen. That, that's what we got to know. All right? So, the skeptic asks the question, why does such a loving God, if he's so loving and he's so powerful, create a world like this? Why, if he's so loving, would he allow all the pain that's in the world to exist? All the suffering. Look at the little babies that are born with horrible diseases. You know, a loving God would not do that. Uh, look at all the wars that have been fought uh, in, uh, in all the, the, the history. A loving God, an all-powerful God, wouldn't do it. Right? That, that's, that's the argument against the existence of God. That is, if he was loving, he would allow all that pain, and if he was powerful to do something about it, then he would change it. Why would this loving God do such a thing? And if he knew it was coming, right? And one thing he didn't know, you know, when he made Adam and Eve, he didn't know how it would turn out. But we now we say that he's loving, he's powerful, and he's all-knowing. He knew it would be just like it is, and for us, it doesn't make sense. Right. When we, when we try to say he's loving and he allowed all this pain. Because of course, we're so smart, we would not have allowed all this pain. That's in the world. We would have, we would have done it differently. We would have created people that had some sense. Right. Right, which means we wouldn't have created us. 
<laughs> right? We were praying for people to have some sense that knew how to live right and not kill each other and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right? That's what we would have done. Right? And of course, when we say that, we recognize that we wouldn't be here to even enjoy such a world. Right. We wouldn't even be here. Right? Somebody else would be here if that was possible. But the reality is, once you give free will, then you open the door to all that you see around. Once you, once you give free will, then what you're, what you're allowing in is the opportunity for death. Right? Because sin brings death. When you disobey God's rules, death results. That's just the way it is, right? That is, that is one of the things, because in God is life. And once you push away from him, then the other side of that is death. So the farther away you get from the Lord, the closer you get to death. And death comes right in and has its way. And then the problem is, we, unfortunately, we like death more than we like life. <laughs> right? Because we find life boring and death exciting. Right? We, 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 like, we like, you know, the, the drama. We like the arguing. We like to uh, uh, um, overcome somebody. We like to get over. We like to, you know, take something that, that doesn't belong to us to find out what's going to happen next. You know, the saying says that uh, 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 nothing so sweet as stolen items. You know, stolen water. I mean, it's, it, just, it just tastes a little bit better. I remember when I was in a firehouse. You know, we would, you know, they'd be betting over this or betting over that or whatever. And if you if you lost the bet or you won the bet, and somebody to buy you a soda, somebody they'd be up there drinking this free soda like, oh, this is the best soda in the world. <laughs> Ooh, it's so good. I don't know what it's about. It's just so good, right? Why? Because I because I beat you, right? Because I beat you out of it, right? And, 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 and something about our nature, our sin nature, enjoys beating other people. Getting over on other people, right? And even though we try to act like you know we're better than that, the reality is we ain't better than that. Help us, Lord. Help us. And all you got to do is look at us and see, you know, if you take an honest look at all the times that we lie, all the times that we steal, all the times that we are in any way dishonest, all the times that we are, you know, covering over and, and protecting ourselves and not helping those that are lost. Come on, we don't have a good record. Amen. No, 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 no. We don't have a good record. You know, really, we're self-serving, right? And when I say we, I'm not talking about the folk outside the world, you know, we're in prison. I'm talking about us right here in this room. We are self-serving. No. Right? And so 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 recognizing that, that, that we don't love life, but we love death. It gives God that opportunity to provide mercy and grace for all the times we mess up. But we gotta take responsibility for the consequences of our action. Right? If we, if we court the enemy, if we court Satan, mm. if he suggests to us to do wrong, Preaching and it. if we do it, we can't then blame God for the consequences of our choice. Right? When, he says, when he says, when he says, why don't you go ahead and punch that person in the nose, and we're like, man, that's a good idea. And then we go and punch him in the nose. And then we gotta deal with the consequences. That is, we forgot that he was like six eight, three hundred and fifty pounds, and he just stepped on us. Why would we blame God? Because we don't go to the hospital. <laughs> right? It's not God's fault. God is the Lord has said, stay with me, and we often are pushing away. Right. Right. Yes. And the result of it is death. And when I say death, I mean death in all of its forms, including disease. That's why little babies get diseases because of our sin. Yes. When God created the world, it was perfect. There was no, no blemish. There was no death anywhere. When God created Adam and Eve, they were absolutely genetically perfect, genetically pure. There was, there was, they couldn't catch a cold. They, they, they couldn't catch a flu. They couldn't, they could, they, there was no coughing. There was no sneezing. There was no allergies, right? Let alone cancer and diabetes and all that. But you know what? What happened when, when sin came in because they ate that fruit, and now they know the difference between good and evil, and they got to choose, they began to choose evil, and now when you choose evil, guess what? You overeat stuff you shouldn't eat. When you choose evil, you kill people that you shouldn't leave alone. Right? When you choose evil, you get all stressed out instead of trusting the Lord. Right? And so, look at that. Even in a, in a clean world, if you overeat stuff you shouldn't eat, 
And you get stressed out over things. You got high blood pressure going on, right? You got you got sugar, you know, raising in your body, right? And so all this stuff is creating things that were never designed to be a part of our existence. Come on. Death and disease. And then all these germs and, and things begin to uh, uh, multiply and, and mutilate. And before you know it, you have stuff you never heard of. You got stuff growing that, that God did not make, but we made by our sin. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. And guess what? It was never God's fault. It's our fault because we revel in this stuff. We revel in it. You know, if they, if they, show, if they show a movie, they got to rate it R. They got to put some stuff in it. Otherwise, we ain't going. Right? If, if, if it's, you know, if it ain't no fornication, if ain't nobody getting killed, if it ain't no blood, somebody gotta be lying. It's gotta be, it's gotta be some jacked up stuff to go in there. Otherwise, ain't nobody going to the movie. Right? Amen. Amen. Right? And the only ones that want to see the movie about the little penguins is the kids. Right? Because I'm not going to see the movie about the penguins. Right? I remember that they showed the, the, uh, the, the trailer, you know, maybe a couple years ago, and it was the little penguins, and they were going in the snow, and the little eggs, and I say to myself, there ain't no way I'm going to that movie. <laughs> For what? For what? There's nothing in it, right? But, but see, something about our nature, man, when, when I see the guns, and I see, you know, the, oh, I'm going to see that. I, I can't wait. You know, I want to see, I want to see somebody die, somebody hurt. I want to see somebody, some blood and guts and stuff. Right? Why? Because that's my nature. My nature, it, 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 it clings to that. But the Lord knew that the, that, the, that the current existence would be as it is, and he has provided a way to mitigate it despite the fact that he didn't put it here. See, that's the kind of God that we serve. He knew how messed up we would make the world, but he could have just said, you know what? You got what you deserve, live with it. Live you met that man, you met that man, lie in it. But the God that we serve is so merciful, he didn't do it. What he did was he created you and me to be the buffer between sin and death and folks. All right? Let me explain what I'm talking about. Turn your Bible, please, to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to look at uh, a couple of scriptures and I'll be done. But I want you to get this because when it comes to why we're here, you got to get this. Because I need you to see the mercy of God. And you know how it is. Like if you have a child, who you tell that child, stop touching the stove. And you got to tell that child 10 times, stop touching the stove. Right? And, and the stove is off, so the child, you know, doesn't even know that there's danger, but you know there's danger. And you and you and you tell that child, I, I told, did not tell you, stop touching the stove. And you know how sometimes the kids, they, they'll go right to the stove and look right at you. Man, that's stove. <laughs> right? And you know, I mean, you know, that's that's how that's how we are. That's how we are. Right? And so finally you already know what's gonna happen. One of these times that that bread kid it's going to defy you and touch that stove, but it's going to be on. And then they're going to find out why they should have touched it. Right? Because now they're going to hand it all messed up and they, they screaming and yelling and all right. And right there, that, that I know you would never do it, but some people might want to look at them and say, good for you. You got what you, you, got what you deserve. Right? I, you know, y'all wouldn't do it. Y'all better than that. But you know, we know some people that's like, good for you. Right? And so, so God, when he tells us, don't go touch something, right? And many times, we're looking right at God yeah. while we go touch it. Right? We, we write in the fire. And so that when we get burned, when we get some disease, we can't get rid of. Right? When our relationship begin to break down, when our own bodies begin to break down, God doesn't say, good for you. That's what you deserve. Right? Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. But the Lord begins to activate his mercy and his grace to give us, to give us what we need to get out of that mess and get back to him. 
Yeah. All right. So, so, so that principle he created from the very beginning because he gave us us. I know that's not too much to you know, cover right now, but let me explain. Ephesians chapter 2, look at verse 10, please. Ephesians 2, 10. Somebody read there for, for me, please. For we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before prepared that we should walk in them. All right. What that means is we, you, are God's masterpiece. God shaped you. Huh. God formed you. Huh. God saw all the things that would happen in your life that would act as uh, uh, shapers and cutters and trimmers in your heart, in your soul, so that you can become just the exact tool God was looking for to do just the exact job that he wants you to do. Right? You've been designed to do something. And what is that? Good works. Right? He designed you for a good work. He designed you to help somebody in trouble. He designed, he designed you to go and rescue somebody that's in prison. He designed you to go feed somebody that's hungry. He designed you to cover somebody whose heart is broken. If you have a hammer and you try to take off this uh, plug cover, I mean, you can do it. But you're going to tear some stuff. Right? I mean, you can, you can hammer it off. But after you hammer it off, you can't use it again. Right? You can pry it off, but then you're going to tear up the whole wall around it. You don't need a hammer. What you're looking for is a screwdriver. Come on, right? And so that me, there are some of us in this room that are hammers. Other of us in this room that are screwdrivers. Other of us in this room that are wrenches. Other of us in this room are specialty tools. Right? And the point is that God, he has designed you to be just a tool to minister to people that are hurting that he needs you to be. Right. So that you are God's answer to the pain that he didn't create, but he knew would be here. So that we go and we help people who are lost, help people who are hurting, help people who are bound up, and we pour out to them the love of God so that whatever pain we find them in, we, we are a buffer to them, we are a mitigator, and we can go and help them out of that situation. Come on, God. Oh my God. Thank you. See, this is, this is critical. Because if you don't get this, you're going to live your life for yourself. And you're going to miss the real point. Because watch, if you've ever been helped by somebody, come on, come on. and if you've ever helped somebody, right. it's a totally different feeling. Yeah. When you're in real pain, and somebody helps you, you feel great because of the absence of pain. But when you go and help somebody else who's in pain, you feel better because it is better to give than to receive. It feels better to help somebody else than to be helped yourself. So as you live your life just getting help, and you know, there's some folks that we know that just love to take, right? They, they seem like they never get enough help. Right, they never get enough loans, they never get enough rides, they never get enough anything. Right, and there are people like that, but you gotta know that they're living a life that is that is uh, gonna end up full of regrets because they never got the joy of being a benefit to somebody else. But when you find yourself in a situation where you can help somebody who you know can't pay you back, right? They can't pay you back. They can't help you out. Right? If you got an issue, they have nothing to help you out with. But man, what a joy it is. Your heart begins to, begins, begins to jump because you, you just did it and walked away. I don't want to do that at all. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so, so you're created for this, for good works. And he created and ordained you to do it before you were even born. When he created the world, before you, he, you even knew who your mom and daddy was, you were designed for this purpose, that is to do good works for the Lord. Amen. All right, so let's look at this last scripture. I think it's the last scripture. <laughs> let's look at uh, Luke 14. All right, it says, then said he also to him that bade him, when you make a dinner or a supper, don't call your friends 
Know your brothers. Know your relatives. Don't call your rich neighbors. Lest they invite you when they have a party. And then pay you back. Verse 13. But when you make a party, call the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you shall be blessed. For they can't pay you back. And you shall be paid back at the resurrection of the just. See, do you, do you see how Satan has set up a system himself where he tempts us to sin and then lies at us when we bear the consequences for our sin? Right? He, 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 he lures us into these traps and then he jumps on our head when we fall into the trap. That's Satan's way. Right? That's Satan's way. But, 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 but God has set up a, a counter system. Right. That is that when somebody is lured into a trap and they find themselves, you know, we don't say lured into a trap. We say got caught up. Amen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Got, 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 I got caught up. I caught a case. Right? <laughs> Something happened. Here I am. Right? And the thing that if you find me in, I did it. Right? I'm not talking about stuff that just happened. I'm saying there are situations when you are the cause for your own pain. Okay. Amen. Okay. Right? Right? Many times it ain't that it happened to me, it's that I did it. Right? right? I did it, and that's why, that's why I got this FTD, because I did it. I was there. All right. right? Now. We didn't got the other glory. I was there. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right? So, 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 so when those things happen, the Lord is saying, you find those kind of people who are, who are in a messed up situation. And those are the ones who you, who can't help themselves, and they can't help you, those are the ones you invite to the party. Those are the ones you invite to the fun day. Those are the ones you invite to the, to the thing that, that, that they don't even deserve to be there. Right? They haven't poured into you. They haven't helped you out at all. They haven't done anything for you. Matter of fact, many folks we know haven't done anything for anybody. God is saying, go to the unlovable ones. Go to the forgotten ones. Go to the voiceless ones. Go to the defenseless ones. Go to the ones that have been pressed down and beaten down the most. Go to the ones that can't help you out, and you be the one to lift them up. Listen, there are people in prison. There are people in the hospitals. There are people uh, in the gutter. There are people all around. And you know what? We don't even have to look far to find some folk who can't help you, but we can go and help. And we can relieve the suffering. We can alleviate the pain. We can bring comfort to hearts that are broken. Right, right, right. Jesus. And in doing that, we are partnering with God because it is in, it is His intent to mitigate some of this pain and suffering that's going on in the world. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, sir. So when somebody asks you. Why would a loving God create a world with all this pain? Well, he didn't create it like this. We messed it up. And instead of allowing us just to lay in it, because we created this mess, he sent his people to be a comfort to those that are in pain. And that is awesome. I know, you know, listen, I'm going to tell you, Christians don't always live this up. Right? Uh, Christians... We, we don't. We are not always the best example of Christ. Help us, Lord. I wish. I wish we were better. Yes. I wish Christians were more like Christ. Yes. Right. Now, certainly, I wish folk that said they were Christians mm -hmm. would act like Christians. Because you know, everybody that said they're Christian they ain't a Christian. Yes. I hope you know that. Yes. Just because somebody get on TV and talk about I thank the Lord, right. that does not mean Amen. they're Christian. Right? It doesn't mean that they know some stuff to say and they said it, but then they're going to go on and say what they really mean. Right? Amen. Amen. right? And so, all, unfortunately, everybody that says they're a Christian is not a Christian and, and, or doesn't act like a Christian. But I need you to understand that it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. What about you? Right. Come on now, come on. Now. You have an opportunity to be the one that shows Christ in this world. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity to be the one that instead of being selfish, you are selfless. Pouring into others. Right? You have the opportunity to be different than all the hypocrites you say you know. Amen. 
Amen. You, you, have, you have opportunity to change the world. Yes. Right? Because of, of the light that God is shining through you to people who are utterly lost. That's right. Who have no hope. Who nobody is helping. Who's forgotten about. Amen. Amen. Amen.